This is a sample segment of Sten and the Star Wanderers by Alan Cole, narrated by Colin Hussey, now available at Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. What the clot is that? Sten said, fingers moving to the weapons board. Left tap and he'd unleash the laser cannons. Center tap, a torrent of AM-2 rounds. Right tap got a Marmageddon in the form of a swarm of nuclear-tipped torpedoes that would turn the target into radioactive space dust. As he goggled at the object that had just popped into view, he was favoring the Armageddon option. The thing was immense and so black that it looked like a hole in the fabric of space. A hole shaped like an ancient ship so pitted and scarred that it might have been wandering among the stars since the beginning of time. Beats the drac out of me, Ida said, shifting her supersized rump uncomfortably in the pilot's chair. One stinking second, there's nothing but boring stars and whizzing space drac. Next, this, this thing shows up. Yeah, but do I kill it, fire a warning shot, or invite the skipper to dinner? Sten said, more than a little exasperated. The safest, and therefore wisest, course would be to kill it, Doc said, huge eyes aglitter with bloodlust. It was a disconcerting sight. Doc looked like a cuddly teddy bear with nothing but universal love and sweet dripping honeycombs on his mind. I'd vote for a warning shot, Ida said. Think of the prize money that thing would fetch. If they may be Campbells, Alex Kilgore said in his thick Scots burr, a dusk more for we bite a haggis. The heavy worlder never looked out of sorts, no matter what the emergency, but Sten noticed the tension in his friend. Oversized biceps bulging like big springs ready to unleash the considerable power contained in that short, tubby frame. Let's see who they are first, Sten told Ida, then do the thumbs-up or down routine. Ida's chubby fingers flashed over her board, round rom features furrowed in concentration, dark eyes alight with curiosity. In her loose, flowing gypsy outfit, she looked more like an overweight fortune teller than a crack mantis operative. She blinked at her display. What's this, Drac? Stan's hand moved closer to the board. Does that mean shoot? Ida gave Sten a sour look. No, it means I can't seem to... Her voice trailed off as she continued to work her board, sensors probing, figures and symbols flashing before her. Sten remained silent, prodding Ida wouldn't speed things up. Also, he had complete confidence in her ability to drill through any firewall in existence. In fact, he had total confidence in every being in the control room of the storm, a little bulkily class Imperial attack boat on a TDY convoy escort assignment. If whoever was in command of the mysterious starship could accomplish the impossible and dig out the personal fiche of the storm, he, she, whatever, would find the following. Sten, N.I., Lieutenant, O.C. Mantis Section 13, Weapons. Kilgore, Alex, Sergeant, N.C.O.I.C., Demolitions. Calderash, Ida, Corporal, Pilot and Electronics. Blurchinaus, a.k.a. Doc, Unranked, Anthropologist, Medic. Note, Op Campfar, Under Directorate O.C. Mercury Corps, Subsequent Entries to be Cleared Through Colonel Ian Mahoney, Commander, Mercury Corps. The fiche would offer no hint that the team's most recent assignment was to overthrow the government of the Lupus Cluster, a frontier section popularly known as the Wolf Worlds, and install a race of Viking-like beings, the Boar, to keep a hairy fist on the warring religious fanatics who formed the majority of the inhabitants. It wasn't that the Eternal Emperor, ruler of a vast galactic empire populated by countless sentient life forms, particularly cared if the previous government was run by fanatics, as long as they reliably paid their AM2 bills, they could pretty much do and believe as they liked. But as it happened, a superload of Imperium X had been discovered not far from the Wolf Worlds, and the only practical route to deliver the substance to the Emperor led directly through the Lupus Cluster. Without Imperium X, AM2 was useless, and without Antimatter 2, the ultimate energy source, the Empire would wheeze to a halt and then collapse.